Hey, this is Ish, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a black background from stock footage and how to animate it to create some really cool videos. Let's get started. So I got this stock footage from Canva. If you aren't familiar with Canva, it's a graphics tool editor. I use it for my thumbnails, videos, and pictures. If you'd like to try out the pro license, I have an affiliate link in the description, which gives you a 30 day free pro license, a chance to try it out and see how you use it. So in Adobe Premiere Elements expert mode, first thing you can do if you want to remove a black background is you can go to apply to effect, go down to opacity, and then you can set it to screen. But what I've noticed is when you set it to screen is that you kind of get these lines on the side. So this is just one option that I'm showing you, maybe on the footage or stock footage that you're using, you may not get the lines. This may be the best option for you. So this is just one option for this one, for me with this particular video and a version of Adobe Premiere Elements that I'm using, I am getting this here. I can reduce the opacity, but then the line, as you can see, still stays on the screen. So another one you can do is you can try light and color. So with light and color, the line's gone, but the color doesn't look the same or like it, the original picture what I had. So let me go back to normal. You can see what it looks like in normal. And then when I go to light and color, got to lose that quality. So the best option, in my opinion, at least for this particular footage and in the version of Premiere I'm using is Luma key. So I select Luma key. I'm going to drag it to the timeline. It pretty much keeps the image the way it is. And there is no lines on the side, no border. It gives you the ability to trust the threshold. Right. And then you can also adjust the cutoff, play around with it, see how the footage looks. You can use opacity screen, opacity lighten or Luma key. Take a look at the footage. At least now, you know, three different ways. If you're not getting that exact look with Luma key, then go try screen, go try lighten. that may get you the look that you want. So next, just as something, a bonus, something fun. I'm going to show you how I was able to animate this footage. I'm going to take this footage and I'm going to start right here. He has his hand folded, then he opens up him or her. I'm not sure, but we'll assume this person opened up their hand. So right there when they have it open, that's when I want it to come on the screen. So I'm going to use keyframes. If you aren't familiar with keyframes, I'll link to a video in the top right corner that explains it. So this would be more, I guess, an advanced or another way that you can use keyframes. So I'm going to take the video and I'm going to shrink it down. And I want the starting point to be right when their hand is open. Next, just before I use keyframes, fade in. When their hands open, it's going to fade in. As it's fading in, his hand's going to turn. And just before the turn, I'm also going to add in the effect, the Gaussian blur. Dramatic, I guess, opening and then just the fading in. I'm going to add the Gaussian blur to the beginning. With the blur, I'm going to start it off in the beginning as it's fading in. I'm going to make the blurriness zero. And then by the time it's on the screen, I'm going to have it again. I'm going to set it at zero. And then when it starts out, it's going to be like 25. So it's going to be blurry. The image is going to come in blurry. It's not going to be clear. The other thing that I want to do is I want to do the motion. They're going to be right there. That's the starting point. And then as far as the scale before his hand turns, go back and let me start close to 25. Or even let's go as far as to say 15. So it's very small. And then I want it to scale up to probably around 45. Now his hand is going to turn. You're going to see it. It's going to open up, scale up. The blurriness is going on and it's getting sharper. So this is the important part. His hand's turning. So I want this to turn with it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply another keyframe right there. And then I'm going to move this. So it's right here as his hand is turning. Then I'm going to go a little bit further as his hand turns some more. Let me make this bigger. Then I'm going to also move this again down here. I'm going to go again, move it. Again, what I can do as it's as he's turning is that I can also make it rotate. Put a keyframe down there. Let me jump to this one so they're all aligned. I'm going to set a keyframe here as his hand is rotating. There's also going to be a rotation that's going on. So I've got position, scale, and rotation as well as Gaussian blur all going at the same time. And then as his hand goes down further, change the position again. I'm going to move it down here. As far as rotation, I can make it rotate. And his hand's going to go a little bit further. Take the keyframe, push it down that way. Take a little bit more. His hand's all the way extended now. Push this up right around here, but make sure it doesn't touch his arm. Not going to rotate again. And then as his hand comes back up, it's fast. Going to have to do individual keyframes in between. Moving it there. Drag the slider. His hand's already up there. So this has to be here. Going to put it there again. And 
then it's going to be here. And then at this time I can jump back, jump to the next keyframe, his hands open. Let me see. I might even put it right there again before I do the scale, just to hold it and then scale it back up, continue to scale up. So let's take a quick look at it and then I can show you how to fix it. What's messed up. So his hands opened up. You can see it moving. Only thing that I would fix in here, and this is me just showing you how I would animate this is as it's going there, you can see his, his finger is touching it. What I want to do is just adjust that. So it's here. I don't ever really want this stock footage to be on top of his hand, move that one and then go back and play it. So then I'm going to look at this one again, it's touching his hand Again, I want to just push this down here at that keyframe. And then I'm going to go and that way it's never really for me touching his hand, except that little piece right there where it's crossing over, just going to adjust it a little bit, then go to the next one and it's there. So taking a look at it, you can just jump from one keyframe. And as you go through each of those position keyframes, see how it flows and it makes sense. Even here, I could bring it down. So it's in the shot, in the frame, an idea of how, if you wanted to animate it, it's a rough animation, but something fun to do or to bring something more to your videos. Let me see as his hand opens up is maybe you could even take it and have it shoot off screen, you know, in a dramatic effect at the end. So now it's there. He's like harness this thing and then it's just, just sends it. The last thing I'll do, I'm going to clip it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these both. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste them back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these and then I'm going to reverse them to go to clip time stretch. And I'm going to go to reverse speed. And then to make it line up, keep this here, but then I'm going to bring this back over here. Now what you have is it's going to be this empty hand and then it's going to come right back and then it's going to loop around and go in the opposite. So only other thing I would add there for, if you want to make it more dramatic is to freeze frame it right there. Then I'm going to insert that into the movie. So it just holds for a little second longer with the empty hand. And then I'm going to clip it, delete it. Now, if you watch it through, it's going to play the first time, hold, and then it's going to look like it comes back. He's going to reverse all his same motions. It's going to get blurry again, just something different. Um, I know you probably clicked on this video, just looking on how to remove a black background, but you got an advanced keyframe tutorial as well. So now when you remove black background from whatever stock footage you're using, then you can take it to a whole new level and do something that people won't even expect. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Click the like button, click the subscribe button. My name's Ish and I challenge you to go out there and have a new experience today. Thanks for watching.